is another interesting lab. So this is a USB bare metal. In this lab, we will learn first how to configure the USB peripheral of the STM32U0, then how to configure the USB X middleware, so in order to create a USB device in a bare metal way, so meaning no ATOS. So in the past, we had some requirements about enabling the ATOS, so the real-time operating system, for creating a USB device. So this is not the case anymore. And now, since you know the version 1.15.0 of the Cube ID, and since the introduction of the uh, stm 5 u 0 we have the possibility to create a USB device without uh, ATOS enabled. So you don't need FredX, for example. And uh, this is what we call bare metal. So this is what we're going to do today. In this lab, we will also understand, you know, the concept of USB class. So, for example, we'll use the HID class to create a USB mouse. So, USB HID, so Human Interface Device. So, this is a class of USB that we'll be using. And then, we'll add some code to our project in order to send data to the USB host. So, every time we push on the center button of your joystick on your board, we will change the position of your mouse. All right, so you know these steps very well now. So how to start a new project under KubeID, file new stm 2 project. And then this will open this window. We will enter stm 2 u 83 mct 6 So this is the microcontroller that is on your disk or kit. And you're going to select it and press next. Next step will have a window pop up like this. So this is where you're going to give a name to your project. So for example, USB underscore device underscore standalone. And then click finish. The next step will be to change perspective. So you're going to press yes here in order to enter the device configuration tool. All right, we start the new project file, new stm 3 project. From the target selection window, you're going to select the following part number. The stm 32 u 83 mc t 6 So it will appear right there. And then you press next. We're going to give a name to your project. So in my case, I call it USB underscore device underscore standalone. So standalone, you know, meaning no ATOS. So this is, you know, like, uh, or bare metal, you know, you could call it bare metal if you like also. All right, and then click finish. Okay, so loading, you know, the IUC file can take some time depending on your machine. So if you need more time, please pause a little bit the video. We will start by enabling the USB peripheral. To do this, you're going to go inside, you know, the pinout and configuration tab. You're going to expand the connectivity and you will find USB. So you click on it and we will enable the device only. So you should be inside the pinout and configuration tab by default. If not, click on it. And then you're going to uh, expand the connectivity right here. Find the USB. So that's the last one and we'll enable the device only. Perfect. Now is a good time to enable the interrupts for the USB. So you go to the NVIC settings and enable the USB FS, so for full speed global interrupt. All right. So if you're not in NVIC settings, click on NVIC settings for the configuration here and then as you can see, we're going to enable the interrupt by just clicking it here. All right, we're done. So now we're going to configure the clocks. So the clock configuration of the stm 32 u 0 So once you click on clock configuration, you will see a pop-up window saying that there are some issues that need to be resolved. So we're going to let the tool, you know, resolve the issue by itself. So what it means is that actually the USB needs a 48 megahertz clock. So this will actually find, you know, the proper configuration. Uh, and then what we're going to do is run from the MSI at 48 megahertz and we'll uh, use so the MSI as a source here for the system clock MUX. 
And then, so the system clock will be running at 48 megahertz, and uh, all the rest of the, you know, the clocks for the microcontroller and the internal clocks will be set at 48 megahertz. Now you're going to go to clock configuration. So as you can see, there is a problem there. And once you click on clock configuration, it says, okay, there is some issues that needs to be resolved. Do you want to resolve it? So we can let, you know, the tool resolve the issues. So we'll click on yes, right there. Okay, the issue is resolved. And now we're going to configure the SM32 U0 clock tree. To do this, we want to run at 48 megahertz. So we're going to select the MSI to be 48,000 kilohertz, so 48 megahertz. And then it will be the source from the system clock and the clock, you know, like the clock for the CPU and for all the internal uh, clocks of the SM32, so the APBs uh, and all the you know, Cortex, uh, you know, core, uh, all of it will be, you know, powered at 48 megahertz. So this is great. For the USB clock, so it needs to be 48 megahertz. So this is part of the spec. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to select the HSI 48. So this is a dedicated clock that can be used for this. And uh, so there is a MUX, you know, for uh, selecting the USB clock. And we'll select the HSI 48, as you can see here. So we'll just select that. We'll make sure it's selected. And we'll have 48 megahertz. So we are still in the clock configuration tab. And now you're going to scroll down and look for the USB. So it's located right there, as you can see. Instead of MSI, we will use the HSI 48. So dedicated clock for this at 48 megahertz. Okay, so here is the CRS. CRS standing for Clock Recovery System. So this is used, actually we'll use it to synchronize you know, the clock uh, for the USB. So this is a way, you know, to be able to operate the USB and running uh, from internal clocks. And so you don't uh, require external crystal. So thanks to the CRS, we can use internal clocks of the SM32 and have enough precision, you know, for running the USB and uh, having a USB device running on the SM32 U0. So this is a great feature of, you know, the SM32 U0. So we'll enable it. So we'll go back to the pinout and configuration tab. You can find it under system core and RCC. So this is where all the clocks, you know, the RCC mode and configuration are going to be located. And here is where you're going to enable the CRS sync, so synchronization for USB source. So this is what we're going to set. Now let's go back to pinout and configuration tab. And we said we're going to uh, look for uh, the CRS. CRS, you're going to go to uh, System Core and then RCC right there. So click on it, expand the RCC. You will find the CRS right there. You see, that's the last, you know, like uh, feature. And we'll enable it for USB source, so source USB. And this is it. So this is configured now. The CRS is configured for USB usage. At this point, we have configured the USB peripheral of the SM32 U0. We have also enabled or configured the clocks in order to operate the USB. Now, we're going to uh, take care of enabling the middleware, which is USB-X. So you will find it inside the middleware and software. So this is the category, you expand it and will enable the USB-X. So no need you know, to configure the FredX. So this is a bare metal example. So we're just going to configure USB X. And then from there, uh, we're going to enable first the core system. And then, so we have a USB device. So we're going to enable the US, UX, you know, device uh, FS. So you're going to expand it. We'll use the stack. So the device core stack FS full speed and also the device controller FS. So we'll enable this. We'll expand the device class. So this is where you know you select uh, the class that you want to uh, you know to develop or to use. In our case, we are you know designing a USB mouse. So this will be a HID, HID human human interface device. And then you will uh, enable the core and enable the mouse 
as you can see, there are some other class that we support, uh, but in this case, we'll just use this. As explained, to enable the USBX, so you're going to scroll down, so you're still in the pinout configuration tab, you're going to look for the middleware and software packs. So click on it to expand it. So those are all the different, you know, packs. So you can download a lot, you know, like import a lot of those, also all the Xcube. But this is a different subject. Today, we're going to enable the USB X. So this is the middleware we'll be using. We're going to enable the core system first. So click on this and then expand the UX device FS to enable the device core stack and also the device controllers. Now we can select our uh, HID uh, device. So as you can see, there is another, you know, like menu. So hidden menu here. So expand it for the HID and we select core and mouse. In order to allow like the correct operation of the USB X stack and the application, we will need to configure some buffer size. So this will be done inside the USB X and you will find under memory configuration. So this is where we're going to uh, give, you know, the memory allocation and the memory pool size. So this is the configuration we'll use. So we'll use a three kilobytes for memory pool size for UX device. And then uh, under USB X device and the common init, we will also change, you know, the stack size to be three K. So three kilobytes also. Let's expand a little bit here because we are done, you know, with the mode. Now we'll go to the configuration part. So we can expand a little bit. We're going to go to USB X. And as we said, the first thing we'll do is change the memory configuration. So the memory allocation instead of default, you know, like uh, which is uh, one kilobyte, we'll actually use 3K, so three multiplied by 1024. So just add a free, uh, you know, and then mul multiplication sign. So this will allocate uh, a memory pool size of three kilobytes. Now scroll down and we're going to look for this. Okay, the USB device common init. So same thing, instead of a 512. Okay, let's go back, uh, change this to three K also, three multiplied by 1024. Press enter. So make sure the other ones also has been uh, press enter huh, to make sure that uh, you have entered the proper value and it's been taken care of. So now under USB X device common init, please use three kilobytes. So same thing, three multiplied by 1024. And here for the connection callback, no need for this. So we'll select false. Now we're going to change the max data length to 64. So you'll find it also same thing in USB X, but you're going to find it under device core. This is where you're going to set the data max length. So I think it was set to another value. So we don't need that. We're going to limit it to 64 bytes. Okay. So this is more like the size of the endpoints and the transaction, the transfer. So uh, we're going to select 64. All right, we're done with this. So go back up. And now we're going to select this. You see, instead of a uh, four, you know, like K, so that's way too big. We don't need that. We're going to select 64. So for the UX underscore slave underscore request underscore da data underscore max underscore length. So you'll find it here under device core in the USBX, you know, like tab. So put 64 and then don't forget to press enter, you know, in order to take it into account. In this step, we are going to go to the project manager in the advanced settings, and we're going to change a little bit, you know, like the function call. So generate function call and the visibility. So this is uh, for this uh, function here, MX underscore USB underscore PCD underscore init. So what we're going to do is that we're going to click this and then you're going to unclick that one. So what he's going to do, why do we do that is, uh, you know, we do this configuration because this function will be called from the USB application user code instead of the main.c. So this is why we're doing this change. 
Okay, so we're going to go to the project manager. So as you can see, it's right there. And then we said advanced settings. This is the function that I was referring. So what we're going to do is first click this one. So you know to do not generate the function call. And then we will unclick you know this one. So uncheck it. So because you know we're going to do that, make the call to this function in the application code. So in the code to be added, uh, you will see later on. At this point, we are done with the configuration of the USB-X middleware. We can move on to the next steps. In this step, we're going to configure a PC2 that is connected to the user button or the center button of the joystick on your new, uh, discovery kit. And uh, we'll configure it as an external interrupt. So like this, we can detect when there is a touch, you know, when we press the button, and then that will basically generate an interrupt and then a callback that we can use in our application. So first we we'll look for PC2. So PC2 is the IO that is connected to, you know, the user button of your discovery kit. So look for PC2, remember the magnifier uh, area there. So you can enter PC2, press enter. This should tell you where it is on your package. So it's located right there. And then you're going to select it. So by clicking on your mouse, you know, like uh, select it, select the menus and uh, we'll select GPI underscore EXTI2. So this is the external interrupt mode. We'll give a name so you can do that, you know, with our tool instead of just having a boring name like, uh, you know, uh, PC2. Uh, basically, you can give a name, so instead of GPI underscore EXTI2, we're going to give like a user label and we'll call it, for example, uh, user underscore button in uppercase. So make sure, you know, like otherwise it's just so that it matches with the code that I developed, you know, like later on. So we're going to use uh, user underscore button uppercase, as you can see, with an underscore right there and uh, press enter and as you can see after that we can use this so there is a define that will uh, you know associate this user you know label to pc2 basically all right let's do it okay we're going back to the pinout configuration tab click on it and actually uh, okay we're good and now we look for we say pc2 huh? pc2 so use, you know, this, so this is very useful, uh, especially for the bigger package to find the IO that you're looking for. So here I'm looking for PC2, we're looking for PC2, so enter PC2, enter, and as you can see, it's located right there. And now you're going to left click on your mouse and we're going to select GPIO underscore EXTI2. So this is the external interrupt mode. And the next, uh, we're going to give a label so to do this, you're going to put, you know, your mouse or so hover, you know, your mouse uh, right there on PC2. And then you're going to click on enter user label right here. The user label we're going to give is user underscore button in uppercase. And then press enter. And this is done. See, we associated the user label to PC2. In order to use the callback functions and the interrupts, for the EXTI, so the extra interrupt, we're going to enable the EXTI line two and three. So this is the one for PC2 that we'll need to enable. So make sure it's clicked there. So to go and do this, you're going to go to system core and VIC. And right there, you should have a EXTI line two and three not checked, but check it please to enable the EXTI line two. So, we are done with USB-X, go back to the system core right there and go to NVIC. So nested vector interrupt controller. So this is the interrupt controller of our stm 42 u 0 And you're going to look for EXTI line 2 and 3, as you can see, and make sure it's clicked, enabled. Okay, perfect. We can now generate the code to do this. So for example, you can just save your project. Simply, see, uh, you see that will generate the code. So you have a window and press yes. 
yes, we want to change the perspective because we're going to be adding our application code. So click yes. We will start by adding code inside the main.c file. So you find it under core source main.c. Then we'll go to the main loop. So this is the while loop you know, in the main function. And we need to add a function in order you know, to have the USB application to run properly. So this function needs to be constantly uh, called. So this is you know, about the state machine of you know, the USB application. So we'll add this function, so usbx underscore device underscore process. And uh, this is not implemented yet, so we'll uh, add you know, the, the function later on. As a reminder, you will find the code to be added in the file that is here. So code underscore two underscore add underscore workshop.txt. So in this file, you will find you know, the code. So it's easier like this, you know, you can copy and paste instead of having to, uh, you know, just type it by yourself. So first, let's add this in main.c. So this is main.c. If it's not open, you can find it here. Core source main.c. Now scroll down. We said, so we're looking for the main function. So this is it and the while loop and we'll add this code in this section right there now we're going to go to the usbx and the app in our folder so this is where we're going to do a lot of modification adding code so this is where you know we're going to add some uh, application code to it first we'll start by this file so app underscore usbx underscore device so this is located under usbx app and you will find it there. So we're going to add first an include for main.h, otherwise we'll have some compilation issues. We'll also add this external, you know, like variables that we're going to be using. So we'll add that also, same thing to solve some, uh, you know, compilation issues. Now inside this function, so mx underscore usbx underscore device init. So this is the one I was talking about the last time, remember in the advanced settings of the cube MX part. So this is where we're going to call the usbx underscore app underscore device underscore init. So this is the first thing we're going to add in this file. And then we'll add also at the end, you know, the file uh, the usbx underscore device underscore process. Remember, that's what we added in the main function. Now we're going to add the code regarding the usbx. So usbx folder is here. Expand it and then go to app. So this is all the application code. So code to be usually modified by the users. First file we're going to add code is this one. Double click on it. This will open it. First, we'll add the include for main.h. So please add this main.h. Now we'll add the external definition in the PV section. So these two variables need to be added right there in external. All right, next step is going to be to look for the function called mx underscore usbx underscore device. So this is about, I would say line 160. So we want to add this, you know, in this section. So mx underscore usbx underscore device init. So this is part of the function that I was telling you about right now. So the mx underscore usbx underscore device underscore init. So this is the application usbx device initialization function. And we're going to add at the end of the function in this uh, code section, so user code section, will add the USB X underscore app underscore device underscore init. So this is the initialization of the USB device. Now we are going to look for the user uh, one section. So this is the user code one section, and we're going to add some functions there. The first function we're going to add is the USB X underscore device underscore process. So this runs the USBX state machine. Okay, and now we'll continue. 
So we continue to add some code, some functions inside the user code one section. The second function we're going to be adding is the usbx underscore app underscore device underscore init. So this is the initialization of the USB device. The third function and the last one is the callback function for the EXTI. So this is, you know, like when we press the user button. So this is the callback function for this. And basically we'll set a variable, which is a user button state to one. So let's add these last two functions right here. So we're adding the usbx underscore app underscore device underscore init. So this is the initialization function of the USB device. And we're also adding this callback function for the EXCI, so the user button. So we are done with adding code to the app underscore USBX underscore device. So this is done. We won't touch the descriptor, so we'll keep it as is. The next uh, file we'll edit is the UX underscore device underscore mouse. So this is where, you know, we'll have all the code relative to the mouse application. So remember, we wanted to change the position of the cursor of your mouse every time we press the user button. So to do this, we're going to add a little bit of code. Same thing, we'll add the main.h, otherwise, you know, we'll have some compilation issues. And then we'll add some defines. So for example, the cursor step defined as 10. We'll add some variables inside the PV section. And then we'll add also a definition of a function right here in the PFP section for the prototypes. Now we're going to go to UX. So here, same thing eh? in a USB X app ux underscore device underscore mouse dot c so this is where first we'll add the includes for main h so please add this in this section for example you know perfect that's one for that now we'll add the defines so here for example in this uh, pd section for the cursor steps and the button detect weight okay so done okay let's add some variables right here, so in the PV section. Now we'll add the prototype of this function right here. So this is, you know, get pointer data function that we will add later on. In the same file, so UX underscore device underscore mouse dot C, we'll add some user code in two functions. So the activate and the deactivate function of the mouse. So first in the activate, we'll add some code in order to save the HID mouse instance. And here, for the deactivate function, we will reset the HID mouse instance. Scroll down. So this is the activate function. So that's the first, you see? So instead, we're going to replace, you know, this parameter not used function by the actual code that we want, you know, in order to save the HID mouse instance. So this will replace the existing code that was in this uh, section there. And here is the deactivate function. So a little bit right, you know, below the activate function. Same thing. So now we're going to add a code in this part. So in this section. So this is to reset the HID mouse instance. At the end of the file, in the user one section, we will add a function called usbx underscore device underscore HID underscore mouse underscore task. So this will run the HID mouse task. So this function, for example, will check the state, you know, if the state of the, uh, the device is configured or not. Uh, and then if it's configured, you know, we'll run the application where we're going to uh, go to sleep for 10 milliseconds. And then we'll check, you know, uh, the state of the button. According to that, we will do the increase of the position of the mouse. We're going to scroll down all the way to the end of the file to the user code one section. As we said, we're going to add the function usbx underscore device underscore hid underscore mouse underscore task. So this runs the hid mouse task. And this is the actual function that will, you know, like take care of moving the position of your mouse on your screen every time you're going to press on the user button. So as you can see, we update 
you know, the X and Y, you know, like uh, variables. So this is the actual uh, position of the mouse of the cursor. And we'll update this, you know, like sending uh, the data through USB. So right below, in the same section, user code one section, we'll add the function that we just described now, the get pointer data function that is actually called right here, as you can see here, uh, from the previous uh, function when there is uh, a button pressed. And then we'll send the data over. So here we basically update the variables, the X and Y. We prepare the data to be sent for USB. And we actually send the data right here. And then put back, you know, the user button to zero. And this is it. We are done with the code to be added. Now we can build our project. So, you know, we're going to build the project. And hopefully we'll see zero error, zero warning. Okay, so select your project and build. So this can take a little bit of time. Huh? So if you need more time, pause the video. All right, so this is what we like to see. Zero errors, zero warnings. Now it's time to test the code. So this is your board. First, we connect you know, the ST-Link on this side. So connect you know, the CN1 uh, USB cable to it, to your machine, because we're going to load the code. And by the way, this is, you know, the joystick we'll use. So, you know, we'll press on that in order to change the position of the cursor. But first, let's start by loading the code. In order to load the code, we'll use this icon on your stm 32 cube ID. So this is a way to only, you know, flash the binary file uh, inside the flash of your microcontroller instead of entering, uh, you know, the debug mode. So let's load the code. Let's flash our application code. So connect your board, if it's not done, huh? so connect it, make sure it's enumerated. And now we can load the code. First, make sure the project is selected. And now you can click on this icon right there with the arrow. And then, OK. So we'll flash, you know, the binary file inside the flash of your stm 2 u 0 So this is the steps here. And the programmation went well. We downloaded and verified the code that has been programmed. So we are good to go. To test the USB application, we are going to first disconnect your board. So now it's programmed. And you're going to disconnect the USB cable from the ST-Link and put it on this connector here, which is the user USB. So this is the user uh, USB, let's say, inside your stm 42 u 0 So it's connected there to uh, the USB IP or peripheral of the stm 42 u 0 So connect your USB cable to the user uh, USB connector right there. And now we're going to change, you know, the power source. So the power source for the application, for your board, for your discovery kit is going to be from USB instead of coming, you know, from the ST-Link that we had before. So change here. So here are the settings here. Here are the jumpers that you're going to change. So change the jumper from ST-Link and to the USB. So do this. And I'm doing it also with you. So I'll change that. And now you can plug the USB cable back. Now, you know, like, so it will be connected basically on this side. And let's see if it's working or not. So that's great. It's enumerated. So that's the first good step. And now let's see if we press the button. So on the user button, I'm pressing it, as you can see, your cursor of your mouse is changing every time you press on the user button. So this is the code that we added, remember, with the steps, you know, the cursor steps, when we change the X and Y position every time we press on the user button. So this is working. And now going back to cube ID, so we can clean our projects. So right click on the project to clean all these files that we don't need anymore. 
You can rebuild it later on if you need. And we can close the project. And this is it. Yeah, so I hope you liked you know, this uh, example, this lab about USB bare metal, so without Arthos. Thank you.